All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Sorry we missed you yesterday. Had a bit of running to do. Went and looked at a pretty good, promising property in uh, in the country. So we're uh, we're excited about the potential of that. And this morning, you know, I, I let me let me bring Mario in. So we've got Mario joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buddy. And uh, let me just say, thank God this this boat hit the bridge yesterday because. Otherwise, I was going to have to talk about how this black chick hates Jews or how some dude, some some neckbeard is bitching at his not gay friend about legal quandaries. Yes. And I'm just not interested in that bullshit drama. L Lowry needs real happenings, not culture I, war. I, nonsense. Yes. 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 <laughs> I need real news, not, not whatever that profundity is. Oh. Uh, now that said, before we before we dig into the the Baltimore Bridge collapse story, which is what we're talking about this morning, um, let me say this about everything that's going on with Crowder and Owens and Monroe and all those guys. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! Take your personal drama off the air. Handle it behind closed doors like men, and and stop. Right, all the jabs, barbs, back and forth. You're you're hurting. You're hurting the movement. You're hurting conservatism. You're hurting conservative media, and uh, you're you're not doing yourselves any good. It it's it's a naked, it's a transparent, and and frankly, frankly annoying uh, click grab. You're you're trying to grab clicks. You're trying to grab eyeballs uh, while the news is slow, and all you're doing is pissing people off and pushing them further and further into the communists. So stop it. So, in the interest of advancing the show, I have no comment. Excellent. Let's okay. uh, let's move on. You know what, Mario? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open with the clip. Let's let's go let's yep. go ahead and show the clip. Here's a. Uh, so understand, guys, what you're seeing here is time lapsed. Um, this is this is very fast time lapsed footage of the of the actual incident, and there's a reason we're looking at this. Right. Uh, it's not just it's not just shocking to see, and I'm running it at time lapse here so we can watch it and do analysis. This happened much slower than what you're seeing here, but even even that. Uh, I think Dad and I were talking about it yesterday. I think the, I think the reporting was that the, the boat hit the, hit that pylon at about six knots. And Mario, you might be, you might be better suited to explain, mm -hmm. you know, how fast that is for those of us who right. just drive cars. I mean, I've well, driven a boat or two in my life, but obviously never anything this big. It, it, it's traveling at the speed of you walking, okay? But for a vessel that size and that weight. Um, understand like, you know, momentum, it, it's not going to slow down. It, it takes a mile for that thing to come to us, come to a stop. Okay. So it's not like they could just drop anchor and, uh, come to an abrupt halt. You would rip the, you'd rip the hull. Yeah. Um, there's no e-break. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, yeah. There's no stopping behemoth like that. So what you, uh, the first thing people probably notice when looking at this video is, uh, they lost, they lost electrical at least for, you know, at least for the light, the lights. Okay. And probably like the you know like tertiary um, electrical functions. So the question: Did that affect the steering? I don't yeah, know. What, okay. Watch, so, watch from right here. So yeah. the clip basically starts with the power out. I, I wish yep. the clip started a, a just a, even a second earlier. But as the clip starts, you can see there's no lights. The lights come mm -hmm. on. They it's flicker out, back out. And they come back, back on. on. Correct. So you had at least two power failures prior to the crash. Okay. Now. These ships are powered by two massive, like massive diesel engines. Okay, we're like engines the size of RVs. All right, so um, if, if they lose electrical, that doesn't necessarily mean they they would have lost steerage. Okay, so the question is, did that elect? Did, was there a multiple generator failure? You know what I mean? Because there's there's backup generators to at least control steerage to control the servos. Okay, that go from the bridge to steerage, all the way back to that rudder. All right. So how did those fail or did they fail? And if so, what happened? There, there's going to be more questions at the end of this episode, 
than answers. Okay, sorry, that's just that's how it is. All right. Um, secondary thing you notice is you see that that thick plume of black diesel smoke. Okay, pouring out as the uh, right as the engine comes back on. All right, or right as the power uh, comes back on. That was clearly an attempt. Um, but my dad was a my, my dad's a boatswain mate for 42 years. He was uh, chief of port operations in Norfolk, Virginia, amongst he's a, he's a superhero like your dad. Okay, so he's I'm getting a lot of this information from him. He is a subject matter expert. That diesel plume means that they hit the the engines to basically full reverse, like they flooded it. Okay, in reverse to try to correct what was happening. Did that cause that abrupt course course correction that sent it directly into the pylon? Um, you know, I don't know. Could it could be incompetence at multiple levels here. Um, anyway, like I said about the rudder controls, okay. So it's not like a car, okay, where you got a steering column and it connects directly to the uh, you know, directly to the drive shaft or um, to the you know, axle control. Um, these things, it's a series of servos, okay, running from the uh, running from the bridge to the steerage, which is the main, which is like the, the cam, okay, on the ship, back to the rudder. So if they lost power, uh, did they lose steerage, okay? Did, did those servos stop working that would control the rudder, all right? If so, that is a massive maintenance failure because they're supposed to be backup generators specifically to power those things, all right? Um, second, secondly, there is a backup pilot. Okay. It's not just, not just the captain on the bridge. There's a backup pilot actually in steerage. Okay. And his job is if the bridge goes out to take control of the vessel. Okay. When he, and he has direct control, way more direct control over that rudder than the, than the ship's captain would from the bridge. Um, what was he doing at the time? Okay. Um, clearly not his job unless we're thinking, unless it's a, unless we're talking about cascading failures beyond the control of anyone at that point. Um, okay. This applies by, by the way, that applies to the U S Navy. Um, there should be a secondary pilot in steerage, but that's just my dad talking about from a Navy perspective. The Navy has that redundancy. All right. Um, okay. And well, and before, real quick, just, just, you say the Navy has that redundancy. Yeah. Um, let's be clear. The the history of the his, history of seamanship and, and nautical nautical control, nautical activity generally, the US Navy's plans and operational standards yes. are yes. rooted in Absolutely. are rooted in you know pre-American, pre-colonial uh ships ships rules, captain's work, uh the Pirates ran their ships the same way as right. navies ran their ships. All, all civilian. A ship, what, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing with a ship, whether whether you're a, a naval a naval destroyer, a pirate ship, a cruise line, a shipping magnate, whatever you're doing, a boat's a boat's a boat, right? The difference from one boat to the next is the size of it. Yep. But physics is an unyielding bitch, and if you're going to command physics in an environment like deep water where physics is the least commandable of any other physical location on the planet, then there's only so many ways to do it. So like, like what you were saying about that, uh, the, the backup pilot, that's, that's just a thing. That's just how these big ships are, are run. When, when you, when you watch Star Trek, Star Wars, et cetera, you'll notice it is not a general that is in charge on a starship. There's a reason that even science fiction reached into naval tradition to command uh, galactic exploration. And it is because when you're talking about managing something like this, a, a big ass boat like this, whether it's a destroyer, a ship, a, a shipping container ship, or the, the Enterprise, it's not just a vehicle. It's it's okay. not it's not like a car where this, this is a thing that does one thing. No, this has this thing has a shop on it. It has a barber shop. It has toilets. It this is a city 
that floats and moves. So uh, two comments here. Crackshot says that the power going out didn't steer it directly to the bridge. Yes, uh, yeah, I know. I didn't. I didn't say that. I'm just saying the power outage shows you that something was going wrong on board. Okay, whether that was directly related or not, I don't know. Um, and then Mr. C asked, where were the tugs? The tugs separated from it. I'm uh, glad in, you in asked, harbor. Mr. C, because we were just about to get to that. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So here you go, Mario. Here's the uh, here's the graphic you sent earlier. I'm gonna I'm gonna run it yeah. back to the beginning. There you go. Look up uh, near near the top near the top of the screen. Kind of say yes. Right there here. you go. Yep, that's the ship. It's in port. By the way, the, let's just mention that this ship wasn't coming into port. This ship was leaving port. Okay. So whatever pre underway checks are supposed to be performed on that ship, something something broke down there on the maintenance side. Absolutely. Right. We'd be um, having anyway. a very different. So right there, you see the. Right there, you see the tugboat separated from it as it was on its course, and then suddenly it veers off. That matches what you see in that video, where suddenly it course corrects for whatever reason to hit that set of piles directly. Um, yeah. Now, they, yeah, Mr. C, the tugs will separate from it once it's on its bearing to leave course or leave, leave the uh, leave the harbor. All right. Um, okay. So, pre underway hey. checks here. What did the I want to I want to take a look at this real quick, Mario. Stay mm -hmm. with me for yep. a second while I yep. while I do a little commentary too. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we're watching the we're watching the boat as it comes out this way, and it's it's coming straight on, and at the end here when it mm -hmm. veers, yep. Look, that's, I mean, obviously the the end result is substantial, but as, as you can see where it veered off course there, um, you're talking about what 15 degrees yeah right so the the clip where we're actually seeing from here that looks like a much that almost looks like it went at a right angle but that's not quite how it went down yeah right so it just this is just a a not a great angle on it for for what really happened so it in this in this video clip, right right here, it almost looks like it's going parallel to the bridge, but it's not. Right, this is yeah. this is it's coming in at an angle. You can tell by the you can tell by the parallax here, and by the uh, by the tombstoning in the in the image here. But what you're looking at is it's it's already yeah. it's already at a at a at an angle from this image, and so even though it looks like like it made a 90 degree fucking Tokyo drift right there. That's mm -hmm. not quite what happened. Right. Yeah. Right. So you could see, you could see much more, much more clearly here yep. as it, as it turns. So significantly less dramatic turn than what the, uh, on the ground video looks like. So about, we're talking about port operations here. Another thing uh, to mention is that when a ship comes in and out of port, there's generally a uh, Harbor pilot. Okay. Who takes control of the vessel. All right. Yeah. You might have heard, remember Harbor Pilot, you know, mention of that from the Suez Canal disaster, um, mm -hmm. where basically someone else, someone else captains the vessel as it passes through the canal or through, you know, through the port. So I'm sure those people are going to have a, I'm sure those people had a bad day yesterday answering questions. Um, but yeah, so I wonder who was the, uh, who was the Harbor Pilot. Um, now, you want to talk about the crew of this vessel? The, uh, the captain was in fact Ukrainian. So go ahead, like instant conspiracy theory, particle generator, you know, going off right there. Um, and it was a uh, crude entirely crude entirely by Indians. All right. Uh, this, this is pretty common. But and, that's uh, Indians with a dot, not a feather. Uh, co correct. I mean, <laughs> what, I'm not, not sure the Navajo know much about uh, maritime shipping, you know, just given their geography. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> anyway, so yeah, these, these civilian vessels, these, you know, these big, uh, shipping, uh, shipping container vessels, all right. They're generally crewed by there, There's definitely a cost, you know, the cost effect analysis going into this. All right. They want the minimum cost, the minimum cost for the crew at the bare requirement of competency. Okay. To 
pilot maintain these vessels, all right? So generally what that means is, and this you know, from my dad telling me, um, a lot of times the crew on these type of vessels are majority either Indian or Filipino, okay? So, you know, you're, you're getting better competency than say like Sub-Saharan Africa, um, but you know, it's, it's there, there could be some uh, human capital questions, you know, as in how these ships are operated. But you got to think like a globalist. You know what I mean? Like pe people are just people are just draft animals, all right? And that's how they view them. So it's basically the cheapest solution, the cheapest and quickest solution, um, and that's all that matters to these large, you know, to these massive multinational corporations that are in charge of global shipping. So right, and it's it's the cheapest effective solution. So right. the uh, the fact is that you you can get you can get cheaper mm -hmm. on the front end but that entails an amount of risk that is unacceptable for the right. uh back end analysis you know there's, exactly. there's a certain it, level of competency below which if you drop you you run out of you run out of uh room to retain profit margin it's like it's like every, everyone remembers that scene from Fight Club where it talks about how the insurance insurance industry works. It's like, well, does it cost more to pay out the damages or to fix the fuck fix the problem with the with you know with the fix the main problem? And that's you know, whatever's cheaper is what they do. You can bring up the uh, the name of the company is Synergy Maritime Group. Okay, they're based out of Singapore, um, and the ship was uh, contracted by Maersk, the Danish uh, shipping giant. Um, if you want to pull up the uh, that what I sent you about them. It shows you they're they're all on board for DEI, of course, um, naturally. And uh, well, there, there's your diverse crew. You know, it's funny. It's like, you know, I, I saw another uh, another publicity image from them, and it was showing the crew on board the vessel, and they're celebrating Holi, which is a which is a Hindu holiday. And it, they they couldn't help but mention that. You know, look at our diverse crew. Well, the crew is entirely Indian. Who are the single most populous people on Earth? That, wait, 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 your crew wait, wait, is the cat, least diverse the crew middle. on the planet. What are you talking about? Like, look, look at this cat in the middle. <laughs> that looks like uh, it kind of looks like Xander back. Who's like? It's it kind of looks like. Yeah. Well, just he just he looks like our buddy uh, Alex McDonald. You know, so I, I guess you got your uh, Xander back. I I, I do Dubai. <laughs> yeah. Or, or like Captain Nemo from Jules Verne, like you know, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put this port to sleep. All did, right. Did you, uh, hey Mario? Did you ever see that movie? Uh, what was it called? Uh, the The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh yeah, yeah, I did a while. Back. It, it was a it was a mediocre. It was in all technical aspects a mediocre film that I enjoyed very much because. Sean Connery delivered a great character, and I don't I don't know who the actor was, but the guy that they had playing Captain Nemo was absolutely on point. Like yeah. like that that was that was in fact my exact vision of Captain Nemo from reading Jules Verne originally. Right, I mean, they just nailed it there. A total aside, not important, but worth, worth a, a quick mention. So, so let's uh let's move into let's talk about so. That's what we know about the crash. At least, you know these two these two talking heads on the screen for you right now. That's what we know. Okay. Well, okay. So the next thing that I want to move into, Mario, economic is, damage. I want to I want to move to Biden's statement. Okay. So let me let me cue that up real quick. While you're pulling that up, okay. Never mind. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I just wanted to talk that the Port of Baltimore is the eighth largest port in the country. Okay. It's a major auto industry uh, hub. Okay. Biggest one affected would be Mazda. So you're not getting any Miatas uh, for a while. So sorry. Um, and also that Francis Scott Key Bridge and the Port of Baltimore is a major transportation hub for hazardous waste materials. Okay. So this has effectively shut down, seriously compromised the ability to for the removal and shipment of hazardous waste on the eastern seaboard. Okay. Um, that port is the, one of the is an inland port which connects directly to the I-95 rail hub. Okay. Yes, Pitt Dandy says second largest for coal. That's right. There's a major there is a uh, major energy firm that's not going to be getting coal supplies. All right. Um, so yeah, serious serious affecting the logistics on the East Coast especially. Okay, because it connects directly to the I-95 network. All right. And uh, 139,000 jobs are going to be affected by this. 
okay, in a, in a city that's already got, uh, God knows what the real unemployment rate is. Um, and as a last point, the city of Baltimore, I mean, can't even maintain a police department, okay? So they're going to be effectively <laughs> use, they're going to be effectively useless, okay, for trying to correct this issue. Whatever is done to fix this is going to be entirely federal government and uh, private uh, private firms uh, taking over. Port of Baltimore, all, all, all Baltimore, all the Baltimore city government is able to do would be to skim money off the top for whatever goes down, okay, to fix the situation. Okay, go ahead with Biden. Sorry. Okay, before I get to Biden, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of comments in the, in the thread, and let me let me address that real quick. Because so far, we've done analysis on what happened. We haven't actually made a statement, either of us haven't actually made a declarative statement as to whether or not this was an intentional attack or just a calamitous series of events. And here's so here's my take on it so far. We have official statements from the government that there is no evidence that this was an intentional attack. On that alone, I'm already tempted to assume that this was an intentional attack. Because if it comes out, if a statement comes out of the Biden government, I I almost can't afford not to assume that the opposite is what is true and correct. I will also grant, especially based on the video that we just looked at, that the timing and the precision of the strike is incredibly suspicious. Yeah. But that does not itself preclude the possibility of a of a black swan just cat cascading catastrophe that was completely outside of anybody else's control and quite simply could be just an, an horrific fucking accident. It, it, is, a, entirely, a yes. it is entirely right possible. It is entirely possible that this is related to your competency crisis or DEI more so than any conspiracy, okay? Though you can right. say those are conspiracies. Yeah. And, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're, you're creeping up on my hot take in a minute there. Uh -oh. Um, uh oh So I'll go ahead and hit that real quick. So right now, we don't know what we don't know. And guys, you're, you're, talk, you're listening right now to two professional, long, you know, long time, skilled, very effective, and highly decorated military strategic analysis professionals. When, when we start talking about this is my analytical take on whether or not something is an attack, you can take that shit to the bank. I have put bodies in the ground yep. with Word documents and 40 mic mics on this skill set in a very real way. And so has Mario. That's what we do. Or, well, what we did. We're, yep. we're yep. retired. Yeah. But so when, when I say when I say this, you can take that to the bank. I cannot conclusively say one way or the other that this was an attack. And I won't commit to a claim there. But let me throw this theory at you. It There is evidence based on the DEI policy that we just showed you Right. And let me be clear. Like, we didn't go in depth on the DEI policy. We don't have to. They're cookie cutter, boilerplate. We know what they are. The DEI policy is predictable. And it. Uh, somebody somebody even said it in the chat. Basically, DEI policy equals non-white. That's, that's what DEI means is we don't hire white people and we don't hire people who have sex with, you know, humans. Um, so. We've seen in, in the news recently catastrophic, repeated catastrophic death toll generating failures in the airline industry that are clearly connected to DEI policy. Uh, and especially that, what is it, Section 7 or, or Group 7? Uh, there's, there's, there's this Group 7 thing that basically if you're, if you are one of the rainbow flag affiliates you can mention it on your on your application and that just about guarantees that you get the job over everybody else because it's this whole it's this whole uh political maneuver to make sure that you've got the wokest trash in the most important positions can i hit so, on real quick uh something hang on uh, something, hang on because something, something, something. Yeah. here it comes here it comes here it comes mario 
rather than this being a deliberate attack or an unforeseeable consequence of just several catastrophic incidents overlapping each other, this is the exact intended, expected, objective outcome of the DEI programs themselves writ large. It is that basically you can think of DEI as one big shotgun blast, but doesn't target anything in particular. You're firing, you're firing a, you know, an eight gauge buckshot into a crowd. And there may not be any lethalities or there may only be a couple of lethalities, but the thing that you want is the panic and the fallout from the crowd reacting to a you know, 10% of the mass suffering some injuries and maybe some fatalities. So you got a shotgun blast of, we're going to throw useless people into important positions. And we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but there's going to be planes down. There's going to be people dead. There's going to be bridge, bridge collapses. There's going to be infrastructure damage. There's going to be valuable people put out of work and unable to be reemployed because of the DEI policy and the the utter bias and bigotry of that systemic uh, attack. So it, it may not need to be a terrorist attack for this to absolutely be an attack by a politically motivated organization where this exact outcome was not what they predicted, but it was within the parameters of their expected target result. Crackshot mentions tra train derailments. Yeah. That, remember when that train derailed in East Palestine and like 50% of the American people said, well, I didn't know there were still trains. Like when we started learning about what was going on with the train derailment, half of America thought that trains were a thing that people made up for Westerns because heists were cool. But well, no, no. That, that was and is a fucking thing. It's like, yeah, it's it's exactly like you were saying, you know, people think uh, DEI is like a precision, a precision attack weapon. It's not. It's an area of effect weapon. OK. Yes. And that and that and that's the result it's going to have. Uh, Sergeant Major asked how this is going to affect the crab cake industry. Actually, it will be a benefit. OK, if if uh, if port operations are shut down for like five months, OK, at least um, the, the crabs are going to thrive. With any luck, the crab people will come out of the Chesapeake Bay and, you know, slaughter the uh, slaughter the slaughter the residents of the Capital Wasteland. Okay, that would be that would be brilliant. <laughs> <With any, laughs> oh God! I need to pull up my junk rifle and go hunt super mutants. <laughs> we're gonna be buying crab. We're gonna be buying. I, I still, I still remember playing that crab cage with that bottle game. caps before the end of next year. Playing that game years ago, the first time you see the crab people, you're like, oh, what, what the fuck? <laughs> you died. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, do you want to? Do you want to mention? anything about uh, salvage operations and you know how, how much of an undertaking that's going to be oh. here okay hold on just a second it's 0800 mm -hmm. let me let yeah. me double check my first stop uh shit i have a i have a meeting in 15 minutes but it's a zoom right, meeting so nope no, no. go ahead and touch on salvage operations make it try and make it quick and yeah. then i want to i want to hit biden's statement and i want to talk about insurance for a minute and then i got to get off all right, 60 seconds, time me. Okay, so the first objective here for any sort of salvage operation is to clear that shipping lane, okay? The first thing they're going to attempt to do would be to connect tugboats to that wreckage and try to drag it out of the, out, out of the sea lane, all right? That will be extremely difficult because the bottom of that bay, okay, is really soft, mucus-like mud, okay? It's called baby poo in the industry, all right? No, I shit you not, a commercial diver I did salvage. We call it baby poo. Maybe there's a better geological term for it, but I like baby poo, all right? Hey, look, so I've got four kids. That yeah. first diaper mm -hmm. is a nightmare. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I wiped all their asses off that first yep. shitty diaper with, with a spackle knife. Right. So the next thing they have to do yeah. is uh, there's two bridge piles. OK, the section collapsed in the middle. OK, there's two bridge piles on either end. OK, they need to do non-destructive testing on those to make sure that they're still, you know, that they still have integrity. Otherwise, when worker divers are down there working, they could collapse on them. OK, so they have to make sure it's a safe work site first. OK, then they're going to have to bring out an industrial like 
a crane barge. Okay, these things are massive. It's a massive barge with a big ass like 5,000, you know, whatever rated ton crane on it. And there's going to be guys down there with Broco torches cutting apart those 16 inch steel high beams. Okay, and lifting that stuff out. Um, you got to get the top side stuff done first, and then the divers are going to have to go underwater and start trying to cut it out. They'll have to cut their losses at some point because, like I said, that baby poo is going to suck that stuff up, and there's no way to dislodge that shit. So they got to get it down close enough to the bottom so that you know any pre any next ship tra traversing through that channel is not going through a 16 inch steel you know punji trap. Um, okay, that was the abbreviated version. Go ahead. Okay, so let's get to Biden's statement real quick. And, uh, you know, funny story, as we're having this conversation, I, as many of you know, am also, I was, a, I was an insurance broker. And, uh, I mean, I was a licensed insurance broker for several years. This is also, so this puts this also firmly in my bailiwick. Because for those of you who don't have a, a background in ins the insurance industry generally, I don't care if you're talking about homeowner's insurance, car insurance, fire insurance, health insurance, life insurance, I, I don't care what what kind of policy you're talking about every bit of it is rooted originally in maritime insurance that was the beginning the the thing that's happening right now this is literally why insurance exists oh we can't hear him what a shame <laughs> you can't hear him? they can hear him Uh, can you guys hear him? Or are y'all not getting this audio? Let me. I didn't. Okay. No, nah, they, nah, they can't him. hear it. Okay. Well, damn. No, maybe it's that thing that that probably had where like the volume is super low when you try to play a clip, and then you do, so you just need to compensate by ramping it up or something. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Well, you know what? It it doesn't matter so much. Let's uh. Let's get to this. So Biden says, I directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. It's my intention that the federal government will pay the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect the Congress to support my effort. Oh, God, Before God. I comment on that, you see, this this was tweet uh, quote tweeted by the Lincoln Project, who we all know were a bunch of commie shills. Rhino I, Supreme I, and, and, and buggerers. And buggerers yeah. of young men. Yes. Yes. So the uh, the the communist pedophile Lincoln Project says this is what a real leader does in the face of catastrophe. <laughs> President Biden is acting decisively to provide aid and guidance to Baltimore. Ask yourself, what would President Trump be doing in his position? Okay, let's ask ourselves this question. For one, the the basic statement that uh, Biden just made is essentially. I'm going to do everything that needs to be done to fix this problem. Really? Okay. Let, let's assume that, that there's truth in that, and he is actually going to do that, and it's not going to be like his, uh, like his ilk where, oh, I don't know. Hey, we're going to spend a shitload of money to fix Haiti. All they need to do to let's, fix this let's assume, is basically... And let's assume for a moment, and, and let's assume for a moment that this isn't going to be the next uh, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan contractor kerfuffle with Biden saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to spend a bunch of government money to fix this problem. And half of it is literally going to go directly into my brother's pocket where I get my 10% from the big guy. Let's, let's just assume that none of the corruption and graft that we already know is very much a part of the... Uh, Biden administration and the Biden crime family uh, going forward. Let's just assume that none of that's going to happen. His statement here, it is my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. Why? Okay. Why would the federal government pay the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge? Right. I appreciate that if there is a legitimate function of government that in part Dealing with commerce there is a part of that government. The city of Baltimore should bear some of that, some of the brunt of that harm. The state of Maryland should bear some of the brunt of that harm. True, right? The federal government would be 
well advised to be involved and and do something to grease the wheels of reconstruction. Sure, sure. Okay, great. Where's Lloyd's of London? Why is the federal government offering to pay the entire cost when you have a shipping company with an insurance policy that is designed ah, that's for why. catastrophic losses? Because the insurance industry is too big to fail. Okay, that's why. There so you go. The other thing is, all the government really needs to do it. There, there are there are industries out there that would be chomping at the bit. They love it when disasters like this happen. Like Katrina was a windfall for all for commercial divers. Okay, there are plenty of companies oh, yeah. that want to do this. All the government all the government needs to do is waive the environmental impact studies and s sign a check. That's it. Every the the, the, the there's an, a disaster industry designed to fix shit like this. Okay, so it's it's really it. Oh, yep. and how much? Uh, so, so there's going to be a Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, bill. How much Ukrainian and Israeli aid will be in the Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, bill? Anyone want to guess? Ooh, ooh. At least fifty percent <laughs> of what's already been sent. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, yep. And I mean, there's maybe maybe I, that is the maybe I, that is the conspiracy the ukrainian captain destroyed infrastructure so that there would be another <laughs> bill to support ukraine i don't know <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> so i got to put a pin i got to put a pin in it here and get to my next meeting but let me let me wrap with this um the the, the impact from this will be substantial and you will see it in your gas bills you'll see it in your energy bills you'll see it in your food bill you'll see it in the inflation at writ large um i be, be glad it didn't happen during winter i'll tell you that i expect i will talk to win in november only because the num the turnouts in 2020 were so large and so substantial that they overwhelmed a large part of the system's ability to hide its own corruption and I, th I think that there's a chance that Donald Trump wins in November just because the machine has to say, whoa, we better, uh, we better stop dropping bodies for a minute so that we can get the heat off before we get back to business as usual. I think there's a chance the deep state wants Trump to win. That way he can be left holding the bag when the bottom falls out. Agreed. But that's oh, a whole that, new show. <laughs> that, is, that is another factor that I agree with there. But the, the only reason I bring that up, right, because this show is not about the election, uh, but even stolen elections have consequences. The only reason I bring that up is I'm afraid that where we sit right now and based on the record of success <clears throat> of the Republican Party, even when it has been in control of both the House and the Senate in the past, even with a Donald Trump at the helm, I am I am terrified that we cannot recover from the Obama Biden administrative two decade catastrophe that your commie friends voted for. It's always easier to destroy than to build. And these last four years have been highly indicative indicative yep. of that. So all right, I gotta put a pen in it there and get to uh, get to my next thing. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mario. Uh, My pleasure. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and cut you off and run the sounder. And we will we love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>